It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the business owner of Lactic Acid Track and Field with Dominique Smith. How are you doing today? Not too shabby. How are you doing, Brandon? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to start a sports track and field podcast? Yeah, so it's actually an interesting story. I got a chance to be a part of a program called the Magic Boost Program back in 2021. And we got the opportunity after immense training and everything to cover the Prefontaine Classic. And I got an opportunity to work with some of the best in the business. Uh, Chris Chavez of City is Magazine, um, Aaron and Joshua Potts of Two Black Runners, um, T. Williams of Real Talk, and just incredible, incredible storytellers, photographers, uh, graphic designers, content creators, all the above. So covered the Prefontaine Classic out in Eugene for a week got a chance to see the stadium, interview the athletes, the big name athletes and all that stuff. And my faith is very crucial to me. Um, it is everything to me. And so it was actually on the way back from Eugene to Florida, where I live. I was praying. I was like, God, you know, I got to get back into track and field. I have to get back into track and field full time because at the time, you know, through, because of the pandemic, you know, I actually switched to covering football. I was still covering a little track on the side, but I was a recruiting analyst covering Ohio State football recruits, uh, specifically in the Southeast region. And so I remember praying that, and I kid you not, man, I was like over a mountain in, I want to say somewhere in Salt Lake City, where, you know, we ended up going. Um, and lactic acid that's how it it came create this podcast and then I was like near Kansas City actually the podcast came first and then the announcer or I'm sorry the PA uh, on the flight was like listen um, you know we're in Kansas City and then that's when it was like okay lactic acid and then when we hit Jacksonville um, that's when it all started to piece together so yeah on that plane ride from Eugene back to Florida is how lactic acid came to be. That's where the idea came. And I wrote it down. I still have the notes on my phone about, you know, what would it entail and how to proceed and how to get started. So that's, yeah, that's how the, uh, that's how lactic acid came to, came to be. Of course, how did you come up with the name of your podcast? I, you have to, I have to give that to the Lord because I did not, (laughs) I had, I had, I had some of the dumbest names like I had a list and some of these names were like, uh, I don't even remember because I, I deleted them because I looked back and I was like, there's no way you can name a podcast like this. And then some of the names were taken like out the blocks and down the runway and all this other stuff. Because, you know, when you have a podcast, you want it to be catchy. You want it to be creative. And um, he's given me a gift to do that. And so he, like, all of a sudden, lactic acid. I was like, okay, we can work with this. And so, uh, yeah, I, I give it to him because <laughs> I'm not, I can tell you, I'm not smart enough to come up with something that uh, creative and catchy. How did you know that once you started the podcast, you wanted to interview people that are in the track and field? I mean, it's, because it's a track and field, you know, podcast and it is running related. And so pretty much that's the sport that I love. I love track and field. I competed in it and I had some of the best years of my life competing in track and field. I got a chance to coach uh, the shot put and the discus a uh, few years back, and I just love the sport. I love the people in the sport, and I wanted to be a part of elevating the sport and bringing new voices in um, and then telling the athlete stories. And so we have a, I would say, a good core of young storytellers who are trying to do that and Uh, It's a blessing to be a part of it and to help tell the great stories of these amazing athletes that sometimes don't get told. Of course, how has it been like taking your coaching experience from coaching shot put and even in track and field over to the podcast side? That's actually a great question. I love the throws and the thing about throws in track and field, man, 
they do not get the respect that they deserve. And so I understand it a decent amount, but I coach high school. These are the legends at the Olympics just doing incredible things. And so to have them on my show, we're able to have conversations because A, I kind of have a basis of what they're saying. Um, just due to my limited experience, you know, at a lower level, but, you know, technique is technique, foundation is foundation. And they teach me stuff. You know, I have them on to teach me stuff because if they can explain what it is that they do and how difficult it is, then maybe somebody listening, A, they feel respected because somebody understands that what they do is not just you know, throwing an implement. It's actually very difficult and very few people can do it. But also, you know, it just brings, you know, more awareness, you know, to how difficult the throws are. And so I think it helps me because I know how to ask questions and I know how to, you know, maybe have, you know, additional follow-up questions. But when the throwers come on the show, it's very clear. I'm not the expert. They have the four to tell me what it is that they do, why they do it, and how hard it is. Yes. And the thing about track and field is, the, like I, I said, the throws don't get a lot of love and they don't get a lot of attention. Whether it's at the World Championships, you get a chance to see some highlights, but you don't really get a chance to see the real competition in you know live action like you would any other race. So yeah, that's pretty much how you know, I'm able to relay what I know and the experience that I had um, coaching for that brief period of time, you know, over to uh, the podcast and, you know, answer, asking, um, excuse me, uh, the questions to these amazing athletes. How is that like, obviously, getting to listen to those drawers and those travelers versus obviously listening to, let's say, the race walkers and the sprinters. So you're asking what's the difference? Mm -hmm. Oh boy. You know, it, it's, so the format is different. And, th and that is a good question because each race has its own nuance that makes it difficult. So for example, the, the premise of the show is we want to get a chance to know the athlete outside of what they do. So their personalities come out. So you see your favorite sprinter on, you know, TV, you know, running fast times or middle distance runner or distance runner or whatever, but what are they really like? So they all have personalities. They all have fun personalities. Um, the difference I would say is I actually have the throwers. We talk a little bit more about track and field with the throwers because there's just not a good feel and understanding for what they do, if that makes sense. So I want them to explain, okay, tell the people what it is that you do, how difficult what you, you know, do is, you know, for lack of a, a better phrase. And then we're able to really, you know, that's how the conversation kind of gets rolling. So, um, and then also the training schedules are different. So one event may have a little bit more free time than the other event. So, you know, you get a chance to, you know, kind of see, you know, what are, what are things that they like to do, um, how much free time do you have? How much time is spent exercising? Um, so I, I would just say from a general perspective, and I hope that answers your question, you know, the format's just a little bit different with the throwers compared to the other events, just because we're trying to give a basic understanding of what it is that they do. But the foundation is still set. We still want to know about you outside the sport. We want to, we want to know what makes, you know, you unique outside of your profession and and hopefully build a better fan base for that individual athlete going forward what are some of the topics that you cover on your podcast oh boy we talk a lot about food we talk life uh just things that you know they've learned in their journey things that you know they hope to encourage others with and then the fun part about it is the conversation kind of goes where it goes so we'll, we'll, you know, I've been talking about reality television shows the past couple episodes, talked about school plays uh, in this recent episode um, that I released in concession stand. So pretty much we talk about everything, but then it comes back and it boils back down to, you know, what inspires you? And, you know, hopefully they have tips to, you know, inspire somebody else. And then I try to be creative 
you know, with my question. So like, I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to answer. So but let's just say this. I ask this question all the time, start the show. So I want you to answer it. Are you good with that? Mm-hmm. All right. So let's just say uh, Ben and Jerry's came to you, say Brandon Sports Talk, man, you're doing it big. We love what you're doing. We love how you're elevating the sport through this platform. We want to create a promotion that centers around what you do. We want you to pick two flavors of ice cream and the name of the promotion. So what would those two flavors of ice cream be? And what would you name the promotion in order to celebrate what you're doing and how you're elevating everything? Well, the first flavor would be Cherry Garcia. Second flavor would be Cookie Dough. Okay. I've never heard of the first one. You can't not go wrong with a Cookie Dough ice cream. So what would the name of the promotion be? Brandon Sports Talk Ice Cream. Okay. See, that's that's how we do. So that's, that's just kind of a, an example of... Um, you know, what, you know, some of the questions I ask and then the engagement that we have on the show. Of course, who are some of the people that you've had the privilege of interviewing? Oh, man. So I have to give a shout out to Kara Winger because we are recording this Friday, September 2nd. And a couple hours before we just did this show, she just broke the American record in the javelin. I've got a chance to interview Maggie Malone Harden, who was the former American record holder until Kara just uh, broke it. Um, Sinclair Johnson was a fun interview. Um, middle distance runner, 1500 meter runner. Got a chance to interview Caroline Wells, one of the best high school athletes in the nation. Allie Feller of the Alley of, of ah, oh gosh, Allie Feller of the Alley on the Run show. John Anderson. Um, if you watch Sports Center on ESPN, he's one of the anchors. Got a chance to interview Kerry Tolson of C. Tolly Run, uh, Samuel Austin, 400 meter specialist at the University of Florida. I'm sorry, 800 meter specialist at the University of Florida. Um, I actually need to briefly look and see because I sometimes I, I actually, honest to God's truth, I forgot. I'll just give you a couple more. Eric Sawinski, Marley Stahl of Marley Stahl, Pro, Vanessa Fraser, Val Constein. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been blessed to interview some pretty awesome people in athletics. All of it is centered around track and field, but but yeah, it's, it's been a blessing to kind of interview some of those names and I'm excited for uh, what's next on when it comes to who I'll be interviewing. Of course, what was it like to get to interview athletes such as Maggie Malone? And what was that interview like interviewing Maggie Malone? Maggie is one of the coolest human beings you will ever meet. Um, Very inspiring, very centered around her faith. And that really inspires others. It's always an honor to get a chance to interview people. But when you talk to them, you see them as people um, who are trying to use their platform for a greater good. So I always love getting a chance to talk to these athletes and these wonderful content creators, storytellers, podcasters like yourself who are trying to do incredible things. They inspire me. Maggie in particular, that interview was so much fun because we covered so much ground. Like I said, we talked about concession stands. We talked about uh, the javelin. We really dove deep into her faith. In this episode that I encourage everybody to to listen to or watch, especially if you're struggling, (laughs) we sang, I sang, I've been singing on these shows for the past month. I don't know why, but that's just kind of how it goes. So uh, it's a fun conversation. It's just like if you two friends were going on a run or having dinner or something like that. Um, not just with her, but when it comes to all the guests. So it, it, it's just been a lot of fun to get a chance to get a chance to know these people and get a chance to interview them. What's it like, obviously, getting to know those Olympians, such as Olympians, such as Maggie Malone? Accomplish such an incredible, you know, incredible thing, um, especially when you're around the same age. Like I'm 28 and some of the people that I've interviewed are um, around the age that I am and just to see what they've been able to accomplish is truly inspiring and it's truly amazing so if somebody takes uh, an hour or two to come on my show especially of that magnitude I, I view everybody the same I don't I don't do superiority of class and all that stuff but uh, to some for somebody who has accomplished such an incredible um, a, accomplishment and achievement of making the olympic team which is so hard to do uh to me it's truly an honor and a privilege and it's something that i'm forever grateful for how is it like for you to get to go to oregon for the oregon ducks and covering the oregon ducks in 
their track and field meets. Didn't get a chance to cover Oregon in directly. Like I said, covered the Prefontaine Classic, uh, which was an experience of a lifetime. Um, I will say this. It's hard to get into Eugene, but when you step foot in Eugene, Oregon, it is track town USA in in every facet of the word. So it was truly an honor, a privilege, and a blessing. I can't wait to go back. Incredible stadium. Uh, it felt like home. Um, passed some pretty decent food there, too. Not going to lie, because, you know, food is life. So um, it, it, it was awesome to get a chance to see some of the best in college and the best in the world compete at the big stage, at such a big stage and at such – a prestigious stadium, even if it's new, just still on the heels of the old old school uh, Hayward Field. So um, it, it was truly awesome. Who would be some of your dream interviews to interview? Oh, boy. Just for track and field? Mm-hmm. Allison Felix would probably be at the top of the list. I would love to interview Otto Bolden. I would love to interview Michael Johnson. I would love to interview Usain Bolt. Uh, I would say... That would probably be just for <laughs> to keep it brief. That that would probably be at the top of the wish list. Uh, but gosh, there's so many other people. Uh, Jackie Joyner, Kersey, Bobby Kersey, John Smith. Man, I could go on and on about a wish list of people that I would love to talk to. What would be a track and field athlete that you would love to interview, and you would say, "Mom, I made it, and I would retire after that." Oh boy, probably Usain Bolt. Probably Usain Bolt. Yeah. What would be some of your future plans in growing the podcast Laxton Asset? We're just trying to grow it. Uh, I'm not, obviously, you know, to cover, you know, more live events and, you know, kind of be in that analytical role as a, or analyst role, not analytical role, but, you know, more of the role of an analyst, you know, do some live streams, live coverage, really get a chance to expand, you know, what we do and, um, you know, do live interviews and live podcasts and stuff like that. So uh, those would be the short-term goals, but obviously just continue to get athletes on here and personalities and continue to share their story. What are some of your future events that you plan on covering for your podcast, Laxton Asset? Don't know quite yet. I have an idea, but I'm actually not ready to announce. So uh, you'll just have to stay tuned and see. Uh, hopefully, hopefully some things shake out. Uh, it's all in God's hands, all in his timing. So, um, like I said, don't want to speak too soon of some certain possibilities, but there are some things possibly in store uh, in the very near future that um, uh, could be pretty awesome for the for the page. Of course, what would that feel? What would that feeling be like if you could cover the Olympics and get to cover it for your podcast, Lex? I will let you know, hopefully in 2024. <laughs> um, I would love to go to Paris to cover that. Um, it would it would be amazing. Um, you know, that's the one of, if not the biggest stage in sports to get a chance to uh, bring that brand of lactic acid to the Olympics and to get a chance to enhance the athlete stories at such a big stage. It would be, it, it would be amazing. Uh, I don't even know would how to put it into words because it would it would just truly be incredible and uh i'm very hopeful that will happen very soon of course what are some of your future plans in this in growing the podcast in track and field and what are some of the things that you've learned so far uh just learn that you have to be patient patience is key and be authentic to who you are to i own so be true future plans like i said there's some things uh you know we're looking at down the road as far as um well, like I said, I don't want to speak on it too soon, but uh, just continuing to get more guests on the show, elevate the sport by telling the stories of these wonderful athletes and wonderful people associated with track and field, whether you are a color commentator or a journalist or a podcaster or media personality. Um, that's what we're looking to do. What advice would you give those people that are looking to start a sports podcast dealing in the sport of track and field? That's a good question, man. I would say, you know, make sure that you have a purpose for what you do. Don't just get into this. Don't just do life, anything in life without having a purpose that is not only going to help you, but to help others. I think when you have a platform like a podcast, you have the ability to 
affect change in positive ways. So have a purpose, even if the plan is, you know, all there yet, because here's the thing, plans change, things change, and you can adapt and adjust. So have a purpose for what you do. Be patient in your approach and always look at the glass half full instead of the glass half empty. When you're doing your preparation, be informed. Uh, nobody <laughs> wants to, you know, come to a podcast. It's okay to ask questions and it's okay to be uninformed in certain things because you let your guests be the expert. Um, but just to come in there, you have no idea who the person is. That's a, that's a red flag. So the, that's the advice that I would give to anyone who is looking to start um, a podcast, have a purpose for what you do, be passionate about it, be patient and be informed. What advice would you give those people that are looking to start interviewing professional athletes, such as how you have and such as how I have? I would say do not succumb to the imposter syndrome because the thing that you and I have in common with some of the best to ever do it when it comes to professional athletes and Olympians is that we're, we're human at the end of the day. So what you're having is a conversation with another human being. And if you kind of keep it to that, you know, standard, uh, then you're going to be fine. And then the second thing is do not be discouraged by rejection. Um, sometimes people are too busy. Sometimes people are just uncomfortable with, you know, conversations and that's okay. Um you know, they're not, you know, obviously they're, when they say yes, uh, you know, they're doing us a favor by coming on our platform. So, uh, you know, they're not an enemy. They're not a terrible person if they don't want to come on, but there are other people who are looking to get a chance to tell their story and who want to um, want the opportunity to chat with you. So um, that's the advice that I would give. I feel like there's something else I should add to that briefly. Um, but yeah, it, and it kind of goes back to the previous point, uh, be informed, be, be informed, be informed because information, the proper information and the proper preparation, uh, could be your friend just in general. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find your podcast at on social media and podcast platforms? So you can follow me lactic acid with dominique smith on youtube that's where we have the episodes of the podcast that's where we have exclusive youtube series episodes for example we have track talk we have a bucket of track talk and fried chicken that could be found like i said on the youtube platform and that's lactic acid with dominique smith if you have apple spotify any of those type in lactic acid with dominique smith you can find me there Follow me on Instagram, Lactic Acid Podcast, and on Twitter, Dom Smith underscore news or Lactic Acid underscore pod. And if you follow me on FanHub TF, go to the author page and then you will see Dominic Smith or type in Dominic Smith. I actually have Lactic Acid merchandise. I don't know if you can see it, but... Uh, this is a lactic acid phone case that you can get. Everything is fairly priced and reasonably priced. So um, definitely be sure to buy something, support the channel. All proceeds go back to helping to grow this brand. So uh, I do appreciate it. If you guys checked it out, follow, hit that like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can get all the latest episodes and everything as soon as it drops. Thank you again, Dominique Smith, for your interview and best of luck in your future with Lactic Acid in the track and field podcast appreciate you man thank you for having me on you can find brandon sports talk on facebook at brandon sports talk instagram at brandon sports talk twitter at talk underscore brandon and you can find me on youtube at brandon sports talk don't forget to like comment and subscribe thank you again dominique smith for your interview and best of luck in your future in the podcast of lactic acid take care man thank you you've been watching brandon sports talk please feel free to like share and subscribe to brandon sports talk on social media and on YouTube.